Two. No. Open up. Oh, no, it's so good. No, no, no. Open up your senses. You open up your. Hello and welcome back to part two of Turkey. Today we find ourselves in Istanbul. We started this leg of Istanbul extremely sick. Every time I go somewhere, I could feel my body like shutting down and I was really very, very sick. But when I heard that we're going back to the city, I perked up. So we are leaving Antalya today and we are going to Istanbul. The city. So we're gonna have a great time. Soundtrack. One, two, three. The, okay. I'm drunk in the back of the car. <coughs> Alright, that was solid sound check. So Pat is a city girl if y'all cannot tell by now. I always fight him when he say I'm a city girl. Then I'm like, no, I also enjoy scenic views until I went to Turkey and I realized that nope, I'm a city girl. I'm, I'm just a city girl. And this is why we're actually very, very different people. Because I'm not a city guy. We have once again arrived in Istanbul. We are going to a VIP transfer, which costs how much? $300. It is indeed quite swanky. Okay. Oh, I see. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. One of the first things we did in Istanbul was to book a Chinese restaurant to nurse uh, Pet and China up. So we are revenge dining now. Uh, finally found a place with Chinese food. Let me show you how carry catcher this Chinese restaurant is. Uh. This is what the Chinese restaurant looks like. Chinese restaurant here is super f***ing expensive. Sweet and sour fish. It's about $35. Okay, thoughts on um, our Chinese lunch? Cannot taste anything. We spent about $300 for really shit Chinese food, but it's the highest rated restaurant already. So stick to local food. Really, it's very nice. So we went to visit the Grand Bazaar, which is a shopping street. I expected it to be like in the movies where it's like vintage, but it's not the entire monument. They only sell three things there. Turkish Delight, fake branded goods, and jewelries. Correct. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun at the Turkish Delight shop where they also sell tea. This is my first time trying it fresh. And it's really very good. So he recommended this us this almond. I tasted it. So good. And now John is trying apple tea. He has been drinking apple tea since the start of the trip. Thank you. Nice, yeah. So we also got this thing called Mental Crystal, which he is so blown away by the salesperson. I tell you, the fella, take one cup of hot water, then he pour. He's like, you smell? Hot water, ah, right? Then he take, he take this crystal. Ah. He take like one rice, two rice grain worth. Ah. He put inside. And then that, that thing starts spinning in. Spinning in. Then he say, you smell now. So I give it a whiff, right? Then I smell in 4K ever since, eh. <laughs> Dude, no. I'll read this. <laughs> I don't, I don't, please don't. Open no, it's so your good. Eyes. Open up your senses. Yeah, you open right. up your right, right. No, no, no. It's good. It's like Vicks. Oh, yeah. It's like Vicks. Okay, okay, done, done. I tell you, the whole thing open up my sinus, open up my eye, my ear open up. I can see color. Oh, <laughs> insane, eh, this thing. And so we bought a packet bag. However, I want to say you can buy on Shopee. Lah. What it smell like, right? It's like vapor drops, but time stand. 1,000 times 10,000 if when you put hot water. <laughs> we are taking the tram back to the hotel now. Um, just now we came to the Grand Bazaar via taxi and it's a nightmare because the traffic here is quite bad and we spend like 500 over Turkish lira to get here. Taking a tram maybe will cost you like 70 liras per person. Need to get this card called the Istanbul Welcome Card. I think you can get it from the airport and one pass can enter up to five people. So we have four of us, I just need to keep tapping the gantry and let everyone in. I think taking the tram here is rather easy. We are two stops away from our hotels. So we stayed around JW Marriott which had a street right behind the hotel that has lots of food. They have Italian, Mexican food, some local street food that we tried as well. So looking up for a fish wrap. There's a lot of fish wrap place. But this one, the queue is nay long. After it's wrapped, they grill and season the wrap again. Okay, let's try. Like. I like it. It's saba fish. It's a bit zhongkou wei. It's a bit yum. Because you don't have the vegetable to balance out. I 
people love it, y'all. It's a whole treat to walk there. So highly recommend you go there for Dreams. a night walk. And one of the first major attractions we went to is the Basilica, Basilica system. system. Because the city of Istanbul was prized by many empires at its time, so it was constantly under siege. Aggressors would bomb the water pipe bridge of sorts so that the city would starve and die of thirst. Knowing that, the city planners salvaged pillars that they found all over Istanbul to build this underground heaven. The only thing this place does is to store water. This was their reservoir to help them not die of thirst during a siege. We recommend going with a guide because they'll tell you where are the nicest photo spots and what to look out for. For example, this Medusa head and letting you know and realize that all these pillars are all completely different because they are salvaged from all different parts of Istanbul. See, the things that we remember from a trip, right, it's very different. He can remember all these things that the tour guide said, right? But I don't remember what you are talking about. The right? pillar part? Everything! No way! He I just walked telling through. us to stare at the pillar and say how the design all different because it's not from this temple, it's not from that temple. I don't do very well on such tours. Yesterday, Pat saw this bird, right? And then she said, what the pigeons here f***ing think. <laughs> See this pigeon? My, my. There are two major mosques in Istanbul that at least we know of or we were told. Mm -hmm. One of it is called the Blue Mosque and yes. the other one is called? Hagia Sophia. So the Hagia Sophia is by right the more storied mosque. Mm -hmm. It was built by the Romans when they conquered this area and it was supposed to be a monument of the Emperor's power. And so many conquerors came and took over and always tried and built upon it. Uh, multiple times over until the Great Turk took over and then the Hagia Sophia became a mosque. However, there is still a lot of Christian artwork within on the walls that have faded. If you are going to the Hagia Sophia, which we highly recommend you mm -hmm. do, please also first check out the Hagia Sophia Museum. So we are here at the Hagia Sophia Museum. It says that if you are going to visit the Hagia Sophia uh, mosque, Come to the museum first so you can better appreciate the mosque when you're inside. Because inside the mosque, there is no guide. Uh, it was a complete uh, audio-visual experience where when you enter a room, something will play and it tells you the story of what I just told you. Lah, basically. <laughs> I remember us, we were very excited because we are Catholics, right? When the Great Turk came, then he defended. Then there. because the country called Turkey, lah, so when they introduced the Great Turk, right? Then we're like, ah, f yeah, I'm gonna come and take over, right? And then we saw the, the cross change to the crescent, then we're like, Oh, <laughs> but no hate lah. <laughs> no hate lah. It is, it is what it is lah. Okay, one more thing that we found out is that Hagia Sophia used to be free until the start of this year. So if you see the tickets going on on Klook, like how come Hagia Sophia is more of it and some places say that it's free, answer is no. Just buy a ticket from Klook. Buy it as a package so it's cheaper. Yes, get the museum pass. It's very, very cheap for the locals, but for tourists, it's super expensive. Like for example, you want to go to the castle, Tokapi. Tokapi Castle. If I'm wrong, it was like 60 bucks. 70 euros. It was eh. 70 euros and it was a huge walk. Do not take pictures. We paid 75 dollars sing to see the uh, Tokapi Palace. There is a free audio guide without your piece. So everyone walking around look like they're on their uh, look like they're on the phone. <laughs> I thought it was quite interesting, but to be honest, I think I travel with the wrong people uh, because they just keep wanting to move on uh, so I don't get to listen. <laughs> Can you show me around? Yeah. Chief yeah. Unique. Okay. No, it's a renting 7% uh, APR. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well. Wow, you got so many. And then, yes. Okay, can you show us around? <laughs> this is my house. <laughs> this is where I sleep. After a while, I just lost it already. I start dancing in the music room, singing. <laughs> now we're at the music school. <laughs> One of them was the one who taught us about this mouth hat. This is my poly friend. I exclusively see him when I'm overseas only. And he's gonna do a shave, a nose plug, and fire in the ear, whatever that is. <laughs> you might be wondering, why don't I do it too? It took me 30 plus years to grow this. He's shaving away, the next time I have a beard, I'll be 68. <laughs> In the blink of an eye, you look 18 again, dude. Yeah. Guys, it gets worse. <laughs> now I got fire. <laughs> 
。Oh, I see. Yeah. But I think the year hair. Isn't it very hot? So you just drop it. Yeah, it is lah. Whoa, whoa. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, ah, ooh. Ah, ah, ah. That was pain. Ah, ooh, ah. ooh. How's ah. your hearing now, HD? <laughs> <laughs> Wow! wow. <laughs> Clean, look at this hairy monster! <laughs> How's it? Oh, oh, it is it? Then face. explain to me why are you crying? <laughs> oh shit! Ooh. I touch it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Next person. Uh, Ryan's going to cut hair. So we're going for this. <laughs> this hair. Okay. The handsome young man. He will now teach you how to buy 14 properties with zero cash. Let's go. Hey guys. This was quite cheap. I think they paid less than $50 to get a haircut, a face mask, a nose hair wax, and facial hair burning. Then it comes to the highlight of my Istanbul trip, the Turkish bath, which is called Hammam. You will be lying down on a marble slab and someone will be bathing and scrubbing you. We just got back from our Turkish mom. The experience ah, in my head right, because we went, India went to a private place right, so uh, only Pat and I will be in the room. Mm. When they put Masu's preference, clearly we all put both girls lah. If not, then there, there'll be a dude that's looking at my naked wife right. <laughs> then I'm thinking, okay, this fella gonna, gonna scrub me and then there's this thing called foam. Foam massage. So you realise then the whole thing will feel um, rather sensual with the foam. But I tell you what the feeling was, okay? The feeling was like your mother shower you. Yes, it is exactly like your mother shower you. It's really your mother shower. <laughs> you go inside the room, we all split up, we each sit at one corner, we sit uh, yeah. our mamas, right? They just like pour water, I can't wash your hair, I wash your hair. Then it's very comfortable, then they just sit there, then they soap. They just soap you. <laughs> then after that, they hold your hand to go onto the to the marble slab. Because they scared you fall down. Ah, cause the floor slippery lah, huh? They they do the scrub. The scrub, I expected it to be the you know sandy sandy scrub, you know. Mm. But it's not. It's the glove scrub. The scrub was okay. It, it didn't hurt. But then came the foam thing, which we saw on the brochure. Which in my head I thought was quite gimmicky lah. It feels like a just trying to give you an hour worth. You know what I mean? So they, they put you in some foam. But no, sir. They use this like butterfly net thing, uh, and then they scoop, scoop air, scoop, scoop. Then when you squeeze the air out of their butterfly Ooh. net, it just creates like like three million bubbles, right? Then the bubbles just they just throw it on you, and then you feel the bubbles pop on your body. It's very very. It's a very cathartic experience. Eh? <laughs> they rinse us off, then shower us. They shower us, yes. And I was wearing shorts. They gave shots. I was wearing a disposable thong. Uh, and, and then they, they brought us to this area to, to lounge and enjoy like apples and, and uh, tea. Oh, and then uh, 10 minutes later, they, they brought us to a massage. The massage was, was okay, it was meh. But it's uh, all in all a very, very short experience and now my skin's very soft. Yeah, so this one we paid 95 euros per person. Mm. Um, we do have a friend that went for the local kind. Roast. The kind where the locals go. Yeah, maybe mm. like 30 sing lah. But um, it's not as posh as this. Mm. So I think if you want the authentic and local experience, you can go for those kind. Yeah. I would totally go back to Istanbul just for this hama. Okay. Really? We then went for the Bosphorus cruise, which includes a traditional dance as well. And this one oh, was a lot better. We booked this on Kluk as well. Basically, we used Kluk to figure out what to do. Lah, huh? It was beautiful. Okay, the vibe for the second one is better. Right. Food is better. Yeah. Performance is better. This uh, wins. This is the superior experience, guys. we spent 11 days there but if I could do this trip again I might cut short by two days the whole point we want to go to Istanbul is that next time when we transit to go fly budget <laughs> to the rest of Europe right we won't be like so what's here ah? <laughs> so now that we have seen it will you come back uh, for the hammam for the hammam to be very honest I quite enjoyed this trip I, I will go to Istanbul again I will go to Cappadocia again I, th I think the Cape Hotel was fantastic oh yes that's memorable we hope you enjoyed this episode um, if you would like to know the itinerary or when not to visit because we went to some places and it's not great uh, DM pet <laughs> yeah DM me okay thanks for watching Thank if you. you enjoyed the video please drop us a like and a subscribe yes. bye bye bye